please not to introduce yourself to the camera. Mm -hmm. Oh, it depends if you show it to the other committee members. So just the way of the way over. Um, so it's 10 o'clock. Um, I'd like to live, please. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, members, officers, and viewers. Welcome to the Overview and Scrutiny Committee meeting. It is being conducted as a hybrid meeting in accordance with the remote meeting protocol and the council standing orders to ensure that we continue to make democratic decisions in an open and transparent manner. For those attending remotely, I would remind you that this meeting is being streamed live to the public. So can I remind you to switch off your camera and microphone when not speaking to the meeting to improve the quality of the recording? I ask remote members also to switch on their chat mentions and use this when they wish to speak. Please do not speak until I invite you to, and remember to switch off your camera and mic afterwards. Uh, this is a relatively small meeting. Online voting may be required together with the vote of the members present in the chamber. So before I declare a vote, I will ensure all members' votes are collected. As well as being broadcast live, a recording of this meeting will be uploaded to the Council website for public viewing and training within the Council. A Welsh translation of the meeting can be provided upon request. Right. Do we have any apologies for absence, please? And councillors Lauren Jennings and Beverly Lake. Thank you. Do we have any declarations of interest at this point? No. Right, thank you. Um, and minutes of the previous meeting, there are some omissions of, of the minutes which we are aware of, which will be corrected in due course, but uh, general points of accuracy, please. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, the previous meeting, I raised an issue about a member who uh, was in attendance at the meeting before in July. We still haven't mentioned their name. So we've just got to hear again. The committee asked for clarity about a committee member to be recorded from the this meeting. We need to put the name of the member. I can't even remember now. It's back in July, uh, of who the person was who attended the meeting in July. It was Darren and staff. And I appreciate they're not complete yet, but the ones we've got in front of us, um, we don't have any recommendations on there, which I think is very important. We did agree. Um, uh, previous recommendations we've made available to cabinet to ensure that you know we can find out which ones have been taken for which ones have been. Um, and then I've got my personal concern because I raised it last year and uh, raised it at a meeting last week. Um, and this is the issue about community integration. Um, I need to have Naomi also raised it. We don't seem able to um, state. Um, if we, in the minutes, it says a committee member welcome report and queried whether previously raised concerns regarding the fortnightly meeting with police and with community representatives being followed up. But it was a wider point than that, it was ensuring that if we're having these community days or meetings with police, then we need to ensure that all areas of the community are involved. And that includes white people um, from white class or practice, wherever it is, to encourage community cohesion rather than being seen as a separate one if we're talking about community issues and concerns. Um, and each time I raise it, it seems to get eradicated from the minutes. Um, it's on the recording, but I don't think it's unreasonable. Um, and if me, thank you, hear, hear me. Um, he's also raised. Um, similar concerns at the last meeting of last year. Thank you, Councillor Evans. I do confirm that uh, this is what uh, was raised last uh, last week. I can't remember last year. But... No, I appreciate that. But, um, it was one of our recommendations. Yeah, we can pick up the issue regarding the minutes um, from July to the next meeting. Uh, we can also review the recommendations and comments which were um, added as well, so we get those credit. It's only because that we have to get them done within the five days. As yeah, you're right. We can yeah. certainly sort that out for the committee. Thank you very much. And the minutes from last year's report be shared as well. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Anything else on page one? 
So Chairman, that has its hand raised. Yeah, we're still on the minute, Chair, are we? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly which page, but it does come where it says that I, I think the net zero by 230 was mentioned. I, uh, I asked for a precise definition of that, and I don't think it appears in the minute, so I just think it's, you know, for the future, it would be good for us to know precisely what we mean by it. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, it wouldn't appear in the minutes because it was definition requested. So we'll ask the uh, committee uh, clerk to uh, obtain that uh, definition for us. That's not the case, thank you. Okay. Is that okay, Councillor Alnaway? Yeah, okay. Page two. Page three, page four, five, six, seven, eight, page nine. With the points that we've already discussed, we remove those as a regional record. Reasonable or true check? No. Reasonable trying to be Okay. If you remember every word, you could set that. Reasonable trying to be Thank you. Moved by Councillor Wright, seconded by Councillor Evans. Okay. All those in favour? Thank you very much. I can't see any online hands. You've got a majority of saying so in favour. Okay, thank you. Right. Moving on. Right before. That corporate plan, well-being objectives and priorities. Who's going to present on this, please? So, Chair, this is a joint effort from uh, the direct team and also by Paul Lyon, who's standing beside Jenkins. Uh, this morning. So, um, I, I'll start us off um, and then call to talk us through the various teams' objectives in the, the order that they run. Um, so, for new members of the Scrutiny Committee, it seems to include the corporate plan, it's a very key document for Newport City Council. Um, in that it sets out those strategic priorities and objectives for the next five years. Um, it's not a delivery document, so therefore it's not operational in nature. There are no actions within it uh, per se, but it, you know, it, it sets out where it sets out where we are headed um, as a city council over the next five years. Um, also, uh, it chimes with the uh, the well-being goals of the Future Generations Act, really, really important we have to set out as a council how we will comply with those goals and, and why wouldn't we? Um, Long-term prevention, um, you know, goals there to, to protect social, economic uh, and environmental well-being of the city. Um, within the document, as it evolves, we will endeavour to set out how we want to deliver both statutory and non-statutory services. We deliver, you know, I think a range of functions across the council. If you broke every one of those down, there's probably about 800 functions we as a local authority deliver. So it's really important that what we do is sustainable, um, but also delivers to the needs of our communities and you know and, and what the data is telling us and also what the community feedback is telling us. Um, clearly the, the plan also has to reflect the regional and local and national context. The national context well, I think we've seen such turbulent times in, in the last few years and continue to do so with the changes within UK government and Welsh government level, but need to be mindful of the uh, evolution of the corporate joint committees, the card cap and regional framework, but also, as I said, some of the work that's ongoing at a UK level with Leveling Up, Share Prosperity Fund, um, and also you know, the, the whole sort of three ports uh, tapped on agendas as well. So things are changing by the week, not even by the month currently. Um, in addition to that, um, obviously, you know, we want to make sure, first and foremost, that the plan 
delivers for local people. This is a plan that, you know, at the end of the day, we are uh, an organisation which is governed by a democratically elected um, uh, set of members. So we, you know, first and foremost, just about the plan make it the very best for the city and for, for the local authority. So very much driven, as I said, by, by data and feedback coming through from residents. Currently up to consultation um, on the draft objectives um, because time is time is of the essence. Um, we haven't got the detail with that, that consultation hasn't concluded just yet, but positive feedback so far, what we see in terms of the early stages of the, the consultation and interest in the place um, and infrastructure sustainability very much um, you know, key areas coming through as a result of initial feedback. So I'll hand over to okay, now Chair for the next slide, and then I'll come back to talk about the economy and skills and objectives before the remaining directors finish on the uh, for the rest of the slide. Thank you. Okay, just following on from, from that bit then. So the development of the corporate plan. So this is our five-year, you know, high-level strategic document for the organisation, which to, describes how we're going to deliver the the well-being objectives. Um, are set out to the well the Future Generations Act. So within that, we, we set our own themes. So they within the plan. I mean, you know, majority of this conversation is probably around those four themes, and not what they actually mean for the organisation. And uh, Bear touched on some of this already. So you know that this is not a document that um, you know is created by by chance. We've gone through an election this year. We have an administration which has got political priorities. I think we're also going to have a good job is really to pick that up and look at the internal economic pressures um, and to operationalize um, those political aspirations through policy development and strategies. So um, it is an amalgam really of, of those things. So also we're looking at the sort of internal market and the challenge and the risks that we've got of innovation. Um, We've got the climate change plan in place. Digital strategy will follow on from this corporate plan, which will be an enabler to, to some of the activity within the. Um, we have to look at how we invest our finances with our medium to so how, we, how it fits in with our medium to financial planning and those challenges. It's incredibly important. Um, our workforce strategy, again, which is an enabling document, which will come out of, out of this. So I'll talk a little bit more about those six towards the end. And also then, Operational service delivery challenges we face there. And then the internal things, so I'm not going to into the bit about what we talked about, but you know, we're in um, some challenging times because of uh, both domestic and global um, issues. So, you know, lots of stuff on the news around cost of living, et cetera, and those impacts on both us as an organization, but also on our communities to support that. The Ukraine conflict, um, so that's changes in legislation. Um, COVID and uh, the after effects of, of dealing with that as a pandemic on both the organisation and our communities and businesses operating within the city. Um, environment best, best said that, you know, obviously that's incredibly important to our community. So how do we how do we support sustainable operation, um, which has a general impact on our environment? Um, and also the demand management, looking at actually demands for the future. Trends in population um, and that's going. So out of all of that, what we've come up with um, are four draft well-being objectives and themes. We're going to talk through in a bit more detail. So the economy, education, and skills, environment, structure, preventative and equitable community and social care, and inclusive leads, sustainable council. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Um, th that was Rich Cornwall, and you're the director for. Sorry, I do apologise. No. Corporate services and transfer. Okay, thank you. Because as you can see from the recording, nobody will be able to recognise you. Yeah. So we you need you to uh, tell us who you are, please. Um, so, uh, as as members of the, the committee, to be aware, you know, given, um, given my previous roles in the city council, this is uh, the theme very, very dear to, to my mind, um, because I think without sustained uh, economic growth, you know, how, how did the, the city and how did the people of the, of the city benefit longer term? Um, so, you know, 
what we want to try and achieve over the next sort of 10, 15 minutes is why these objectives have been chosen and why we've got to this position. So I think um, we can't look forward without looking back. Um, and if we think of, you know, what's been achieved over the, the last five to, to 10 years, there's an awful lot that's happened in import. We've seen, um, obviously, the delivery of Parks Tower, the deliver, delivery of the, the market um, program in terms of the city centre. Also, we've also seen significant um, investment in areas such as compound semiconductors, et cetera, et cetera. So an awful lot when we come to the annual report uh, next week, I think, you know, that will uh, certainly or hopefully do justice um, to the amount of effort and the work with partners that has delivered um, some really, you know, really successful stories in the report. Um, but when we head, head in over the next five years, well, I think um, economic growth can't be looked at in a window of five years. It has to be looked at in a far longer window of, you know, 20 years, in, in my view, because you have to be heading long term to ensure that, you know, as I said, the city is sustainable going forward. Um, so the objectives that, you know, we've drafted so far, are they in front of members for consideration, very much a cradle um, to grave approach so in terms of um, economic growth and sustainability. So we're trying really hard to link up education, uh, skill development into the sort of investment that's coming into the city. Um, we are working through a replacement local development plan. So again, that's going to set out, um, you know, the strategic context in terms of our investment sites for, for employment. Um, but also within the next five years, we'll be looking to deliver um, a new city centre master plan. The last city centre master plan was very much about sites within the city centre that needed um, a strategic focus. This will be a little bit different to that under the, the next stage of the, the corporate plan. Um, also, the economic growth strategy has recently been refreshed, as well as the recovery strategy. So, again, at some point during the lifetime of the corporate plan, this corporate plan, they will also be updated. Um, <clears throat> as I said, from you know, from one to eight in terms of those objectives, hopefully they give the breadth to, to members um, that members can consider, as I said, as uh, spreading the growth across the, the communities in a sustainable way as well. Um, and I think, you know, Rhys mentioned about um, using the sort of uh, priorities of the administration and how we we form those into what the priorities of the, the corporate plan need to be. So it's very much also about working collaboratively with residents and, and developers um, to make sure that, you know, the, the, the services we provide, the opportunities that we provide through economic growth are very much accessible um, and, you know, for, for both visitors, families and businesses alike. Um, so I think that's really all I wanted to say on that chair. The objectives speak for themselves. Obviously, there'll be suites of, of measures and performance indicators and outcomes that will go alongside these um, as the plan evolves further, as we receive feedback from scrutiny this morning and also from the city people. Thank you. Chair, um, Paul Jones, Director for Environment and Sustainability. So I'll pick up the second theme, which is on environment and infrastructure. It seems like yesterday or certainly only a few days ago that we were actually here in this very shrewd group discussing our climate change plan and that so that shows that some of this work has already in fact started. Um, just back before the election the council declared a climate and nature emergency and this sort of theme really embeds that into where we go forward. So it's not just about our net zero by 2030 approach, but also about identifying and understanding our impact on biodiversity and our environment and in terms of ecological collapse and helping us to work against that. Um, also encompassed in this area is um, our infrastructure and as, as Bev talked about, you know, we're the fastest growing area of Wales. Everyone over the last decade has seen considerable expansion of the city and in order for the city to still work effectively, we need to understand how our infrastructure in terms of road, public transport, etc., will respond to that. And it's important as we go forward with plans for further growth of the city that we, we back that up. Uh, you know, the other thing we sort of link into this is um, significant investment in um, modern forms of transport, public transport, um, in the like Burns report, which will, which will um, see delivery starting on this five year period and so some exciting um, ex exciting projects for Newport to take forward and to try and benefit our local communities. Um, I'm not going to go into detail much on the climate change, I think we talked that to death 
last week. Um, but uh, yeah, I think you know, as we go forward, it's important key golden thread throughout our, our work that we do over the next five years. Okay, thank you. So the next objective, so Mary Ryan, Head of Adults and Community Services, on behalf of Sandy Jenkins, the Director for Social Services. So this objective regarding preventative and equitable community and social care is really the cornerstone of our service plan for both adults and children and services that we deliver across the country, across the city. And um, we're recognising that Newport has a very rich and uh, diverse cultural communities which come together support each other to improve the areas they live in and safeguard our most vulnerable citizens. So over the next five years, um, our service plans falling out of the corporate plan, we're aiming to have a much more cooperative approach with service users, families, carers, health, landlords, community and social care sectors to work together to tackle inequality. This will ensure that communities remain safe and uh, places to places and contribute contribute towards making you put a great place to live, work and enjoy. We will seek to have a sustainable social care sector, one that is able to ensure people, including carers, can get early intervention and access to the services they need. And that will build on the work we've already done, done to date. Um, and there's more that we need to be doing that, it, doing in that and that's addressing the adult social care plan. We also want to ensure that people can be supported to live independent lives and they, they are appropriate to their needs. This means supporting more providers that are focused on the well-being of their residents, service users, carers and staff, and not for profit. Okay, thank you, Penny. Back to, back to me. Yeah. Okay, so we call the Director of Corpuses and Transformation or and the transformation in the corporate sector. Um, okay, so this is an inclusive being sustainable council. So this is this is both got an internal and external focus uh, for the rest of the, as an organization. So I suppose I'll start off with the um the sustainability bit of that. So not only are we required to ensure that we deliver sustainable services as a result of the Wellbeing for Generations Act, but maybe that's obviously yeah. Very important thing for us to do without that. So, um, what that's about is about how we manage our finances, how that relates to service delivery, how we mutually buy for money on our service provision, um, how we invest in opportunities that uh, that support socio-economic improvements across the city. So, very much ties into some of the other themes about how we essentially manage our resources um, to ensure we do that. Um, Again, I'm not going to go into the climate change plan, which you, you've you've had here, but also we've got some serious commitments in that around our assets and um, net zero carbon by 2030. So there's some real challenges in there around how we, we do that. Um, and then and then the other bit of this really is looking outwards. So how do we deliver services to, to individuals? So so those of you who are, are familiar with our, our coming to the end of our current digital strategy, which is got a strap line of digital first in there, or digital by default. Actually, the move on from that now is essentially going to sit at the heart of the service provision, digital service provision, where really it's appropriate and, and, and necessary, and actually making sure we get the right services and right interfaces for those services for the right people at the right time. So using quite a lot of our intelligence, our um, and, and some of the work we do through new intelligence have to ensure that we've got those right services in this place. Um, and I think that's that's all on that one. Um, and then to meet again with the next bit. So I think really, really important um, the, the committee to so monitor and reporting of the corporate plan. So I think I think this committee is 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 having the annual report of the current corporate plan next week or in the next couple of weeks. Um, so local government elections act has put some additional um, responsibilities and requirements on local authorities um, so we will be publishing an annual corporate well-being and self-assessment report so that will come through the screening committee in due, due course in the coming years um, and this will be a, an overview of um, our progress against that corporate plan and, and the objectives of it um, and also the performance improvements we put in place 
So that act requires us to, to actually undertake some assessment activity, independent verification on that as well. So it's a, it's a different regime um, around that annual reporting um, for, the, for the corporate plan. I mentioned, um, I'm going to cover a couple of these things off in one go. I mentioned some of the supporting um, documents really that support this corporate plan. So transformation plan is really important. So once we've got the corporate plan, um, finalised and it's agreed by council. Um, out of that comes the transformation plan, which will be a five year plan about how we're going to deliver um, those transformational changes that are, that are associated with this plan. And um, we've also got some other strategies to support the delivery of this. So we we'll shortly be finalising the digital strategy, the new digital strategy. Uh, we have things like the Russian education strategic plan, our strategic equalities plan, which I know is coming through this committee as well, uh, Welsh language strategy, etc. So there are a series of other strategies and supported documents that support this. It's, it's, it's really important that they bear mentioned it's the right of the off. This is a strategic document which shows our intent and, and where we want to go to. It is critical that that is then reflected in the 11 service plans, which will go through the scrutiny process. So we've currently got service plans that reflect back to the previous corporate plan. They will shortly after this is finalised, then look to the new corporate plan and actually operationalise in a way that actually shows us the activity, the action, the performance measures and the time scales associated with delivering the various aspects of the corporate plan. OK, so that goes through the scrutiny process. Uh, into our performance scrutiny committees and then subsequently a bit of the annual, annual report. So it's really important to talk about that. So some of that detail is not in this, but it will be in, in things that go through through it. And then our golden thread around the delivery of monitoring on our corporate plan then ties down into um, our, our teams, individual service team plans and then individual members of staff and their performance measures and objectives for the year and actually how they tie into the corporate plan. So we've got a, a strong golden thread throughout the organisation there about individual activity, service activity, director activity, what we have to do with the delivery of that corporate plan. Okay. I'm going to hand it over to Janice then for the last bit of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Janice then, Policy and Partnerships Manager. Um, just wanted to do a this wanted to talk through uh, the next steps now for the for the corporate plan and when we go next. So we're hoping for some feedback and some recommendations from um, this committee this morning, and those will be considered before we present the final version of the plan to cabinet. This will be alongside the consultation responses that we've uh, received from residents and businesses on the wellbeing theme, which um, Beverly mentioned first thing this morning and early indications are that there's some really positive feedback from um, residents and from businesses. Then the plan is for the final plan to be agreed by Cabinet in October um, before being presented and approved by Council in November this year. Um, and as we talked about the golden threads, the service plans, the 11 service plans then, um, which kind of underpin and give the operational detail of the corporate plan will be presented to scrutiny committees in November um, for comments and recommendations with the final versions being agreed by each responsible cabinet members. Yeah. Thank you, Janice. That's complete. Yeah, thank you. Always members. Um, as I said earlier, some of these issues we dealt with before, but this is very important in front of you. All questions are relevant and, of course, permitted. Would like to start, please. Thank you, Sam. Um, well, I welcome the report. Council, right? Yes, sorry, Council. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, welcome to the report and the plan for the drama. Um, just the overarching regarding training, and especially picked up last last uh, meeting and under staff performance. So just wondering how we actually delivering this trust. Excuse me, Kev, sorry, sorry. Right. you're talking to the second. Uh, yeah, yes, sorry, Chair. I said. Okay, but it does sort of come under page 17, staff performance. I think. Should we find something to link it to? Oh, yeah, I'm sure I can. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like to leave it to the next? Uh, okay, yeah, I'll take on board, Chair. I'll leave it to the next one, thank you. Yeah. In that respect, uh, no, no. Yes, no. Okay, Chair. Um, 
I appreciate this is a delivery document and all the aims and objectives are very admirable. admirable. Um, and, and that's fine. Um, I guess they are the political priorities. And I, and I hope the next time the leader of the council also comes along um, to do that. But I guess the question is, is what does success look like? How can we um, ensure it's achievable on the financial thing and the time scales? Um, so, I mean, <clears throat> when it comes to things like um, more hockey parks and green open spaces in the city centre, um, that will come through, I'm sure, when the performance plans will come back to us at some stage. The one issue I do have is about the consultation. Because if you went down to the city centre today, talk to people who would not give possible or positive responses. You know, let's say this is live. Uh, my visual office is networking events. There are a lot of people out there who are very uh, frustrated and angry about the city centre, about social behaviour, about um, concerns about jobs, concerns about things like that. Um, and I did have a look at one of the consultation documents online, and it was almost, from memory, it's almost like saying, is this a good objective? Well, they're all good objectives. Um, and I think we need to try and do some independent research, try and focus on, on various groups of people around the city um, to ensure that that is fed back in. Because not all business, some business will really be positive, but not all business will be positive. That's that we choose. Um, and I guess that's the critical feature is it might be a little theme of consultation here next time, but the memory once you send that staff would pretty much what do you think of the subjective is that good objective? Well, they're all good objectives. And I think we need to just go back a step and try and get an honest appraisal so that can feed into the fact in the long run to ensure we are getting a more open um, view of, of issues and concerns which affect a lot of residents across the city. Thank you for that. Before I call you in, Councillor Halloween. Could I just say that this has been a constant theme from this uh, committee over the last five years that I'm aware of, how uh, consultation is achieved. And there's been criticism of the amount of weight that's placed on the bus so due to the demographics of the people who actually use the bus. And we did request that it be set aside for properly structured um, consultations to be carried out. Is that reasonable? Though? Yeah, I think the point you, you raised in the past was, you know, somebody actually going around the city centre and talking to people um, with the board and um, not, not long winded things, so just talking to people. Um, yeah. OK, thank you. I'll catch on maybe. Make that. Yeah, come in. Yeah, Chair, can I, can I just say, um, yeah, fully welcome the uh, draft uh, corporate plan for the next five years. Um, lots of things that you can really, you know, uh, sort of appraise, uh, uh, appraise, identify with, and you could see that things that are happening to sort of justify some of the statements made there. But I feel particularly on objective one, um, economy, education, skills. Now, I've got no issue with education, and I think skills, I think we're doing quite a lot there. Um, we're talking about Newport, the fastest growing city in Wales, uh, which may be true, but it's only when you go sometimes across the border and see cities in England that you feel really we have a long way to go especially on you know on on the feel about sort of people being able to really sort of spend and you know sort of more bustling cities i know the uh, closed shops you know the shops that are closed down and all that are a function of lots of cities you know wales england probably scotland as well um but newport we do seem to have an issue we do seem to have a problem and sometimes our 
sources for information is the South Wales Argus, unfortunately, because I don't see sort of, you know, our information counteracting some of that. We can sort of argue with shops that are closing down uh, about the Fry's Walk five years, or to seven years after it's op been opened and all that. And I feel the issue here is really economic prosperity. You know, you you will have thriving shops when you have people who feel, you know, they can spend, and that means obviously jobs and all that. So I know that for a number of years I've been banging on about inward investment, about things that are re really game changers for Newport. And I'm wondering really here, you know, I'm, I'm sort of giving our officers the opportunity to to put me right on that because I don't see really much in the way of inward investment that is making a difference for Newport. Now I know, you know, uh, we'll be caught of some like, you know, the, the wafer fabs and all that, but I don't see that that necessarily is making sort of a big change for a lot of people in Newport. Uh, sometimes it seems to be more related to Cardiff, you know, and things like that. So anyway, uh, that, that's my worry about this. Otherwise, you know, I feel a lot of the objectives, a lot of the themes are good. I think some of the work we've been doing on the environment and all that, you know, is to be commended. But, you know, my bugbear really is the economy and and jobs for people in Newport, you know, that actually, you know, like we used to have, it may not be possible now that that is possible, you know, I may be asking for too much, but if you go back sort of in the uh, early 2000s, you know, we used to have more uh, relocation, more more jobs come in and, 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 and that's not happening now. And it could be a UK issue, but I do find, you know, when you compare us to some of the English cities, quite honestly, we, we, we have a long way to go. Thank you. Economic regeneration. Right. Thank you. Thank you okay. Thank you, Councillor Army. Um, I think you know you, you, one of your sort of um, latter statements rings true in that we're not unique in terms of the economic challenges that we're facing. City centres, town centres are all facing a contraction in terms of the, their size and and their offer. I think you know if you, if you go to our own capital city, you will see. Um, a number of vacant units and those. So, so that is a very present challenge that certainly we as, as officers are very aware of. I think um, it's interesting that Newport is still one of the, uh, you know, one of the, the cities that has higher levels of inward migration on a daily basis for, so, you know, a lot of more commu um, commuters. So, you know, clearly there are jobs in the city. Um, it's just how we enable that, you know, people live in, in the city to access and also that's where the skills and education aspects do come in, and I think you know if you compare um, Newport to some of the other areas across South East Wales, we you know we are um, we are holding our own in terms of the investment levels currently. Um, so you know we, we're very aware of the economic challenges that we face in, but as we've always said, there are economic opportunities, and I think you know so when we come to look at the annual report of what's been achieved despite the pandemic, despite um, the other sort of external pressures that uh, the areas are facing, you know, we have delivered an awful lot. But, you know, taking on board your point in terms of jobs and how local people access the jobs, that's why I think the, the skills and education aspect is so important in terms of, of sustained, um, sustainable economic prosperity. Clearly, we are here today, you know, um, scrutinising the corporate plan rather than the economic growth strategy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, that's probably all I would want to say in response at this point in time. But yes, as officers, we're acutely aware of the need to, to flip some of the challenges that, that Newport and other areas face into opportunities. Thank you. you said, yeah. Yeah, can I just, just quickly yeah. come back? I mean, just to say that I've only seen recently, um, um, if you like, a um, communication from Matthew, uh, and, and I welcome the soft landing thing. You know, we obviously remain to be seen uh, what that will be like, you know, when we see the cabinet members report on it. But uh, yeah, I, I, like I'm saying, you know, we do see signs in lots of the things that have been identified in the draft report here, and they are m much to be welcome, really. Um, 
but let's hope you know that that in the next five years something will will it translate i think really we desperate really for some for a game changer for newport i feel thank you thank you uh, Councillor Vick Westhead. Thank you. Um, yeah, as as, um, as the other councillors have said, I also welcome the uh, draft corporate wellbeing plan. Um, and um, obviously, this is new territory for me. It's my first term. Um, it's been interesting reading. I'm, I'm obviously assuming from what I've been reading as well with this report that um, it's an overarching, quite a sort of a, a macro level report on what's going to be happening, and there'll be more detail. Um, with some of the other um, reports that come our way in this committee. But following on from what um, um, the other councillor just said, I, I'd like to also say, you know, maybe um, in terms of um, trying to improve the economic um, offer within Newport, I'm wondering whether there's any room with this in this report for consideration being given to things like the heritage offer. Um, heritage is quite um, something that I, I actually feel quite strongly about. And if we're looking for some sort of um, unique selling point, really, for, for Newport that could bring a whole sort of raft of, of um, employment opportunities, it's it's things such as, um, well, the, obviously the Transporter Bridge, Newport Ship um, and Killian, which um, obviously being a representative there, I'm, I'm quite keen on trying to promote as well. But I just feel that we've got a real... A really strong historic offer and that, that would tie in as well to the well-being goals um that the uh, seven well, well-being goals um in particular wales as a vibrant culture thriving welsh language and also um prosperous wales and a resilient wales i think you know there, there's a lot that we can offer we're, we're the gateway into wales as well and maybe um some consideration could be given to uh, the heritage offer that we we you know we could really put forward to try to uh, but you know support the economy within Newport. Thank you. Let's continue, Chair. Chair, I, I think, um, Councillor, you know, you're absolutely right um, in that um, heritage is one very important pillar, um, you know, one very important, important pillar of our economic growth plans, um, and I think you'll see within the corporate plan that there is an intention to develop a cultural and heritage strategy. So as you said, obviously, you know, again, members will be aware, um, just walk ground on the, the transport of bridge work and, you know, could reflect on how long that's, that's taken seven years from its sort of conception as a, a thought piece around how we're going to develop that to, to actually come into to fruition. But you're right, you know, Newport has got such a lot to offer in terms of heritage. So again, as we move forward, economic growth strategy, uh, and the cultural strategy will pick up on those aspects in more detail. So, yeah, totally support what you're saying. I'd like to come back and say I'd applaud that and I and I really not just because um you know I'm I'm representing Killian as a ward, but I actually moved to the Killian area myself because of the, the, the Roman heritage of that particular location. It really is is a world class heritage site. It's, it's an incredibly significant feature. Um and that there's a report that came out several years ago that not many people may be aware of, the Thurley Review, um, which was commissioned by the Welsh Assembly, uh, which really pushed the, um, the, the the validity of Killian as an overall site. Um, and, and I feel strongly that, that that would be something that ought to be considered within that heritage offer, because it's something that could even, you know, if, if, if people were inclined to try to push it, uh, become a world heritage uh, site. Um, obviously, there'd need to be infrastructure to support that as well um, and to make sure anybody within the locality wasn't um, detrimentally impacted by you know, additional traffic and that type of thing. But it, um, having visited numerous um, Roman sites around Europe, it, it is a very, very strong selling point um, for Newport that I hope will be considered in future. Thank you. Hi. Uh Another again great report. Um, for me, I don't think there's going to be one golden bullet which is going to save the city. It's just not going to happen. We're not in that sort of environment anymore. Um, and as you know, I have a business background, and for me, it's going after those little one percenters. Because as soon as you get a few one percenters, before you know it, you've then got five percent improvement, you've got eight and then ten, and then that is where the growth comes from. What I think we need to be it doesn't seem to be very much about SMEs in there. Um, for me, we um, 
we do need to be attracting um, the SMEs into the centre. We, we do need to be looking at partnerships. We also need to be looking at ways to be brave in how we do this as well, not just shying away from something that looks a little bit difficult. And it's how we achieve, in, in every aspect of this, of, of the support, is how we achieve that um, in the extremely difficult climate that we've got approaching us over the next two or three years, because we, we haven't really started to feel the effects yet, I don't believe. Um, I think the public is only now um, realize, starting to realise how difficult things are actually going to become. Um, it's kind of, for me, it kind of feels like COVID should have felt, but without the you know, support that we had, and we're not going to be getting that, that support, I, I don't think, from the government moving forward. Um, so it's, it's how we manage our ability to go after the opportunities which may require some investment, whilst also doing all of the things which we say we're going to be doing in this, in this planetary forward. Yeah, how do we do that? Thank you. We'll take this one. Economy is really again, I think, I, I would agree with what probably say and it would need to be careful we're not straying off the corporate plan mm -hmm. in, in general and going down into one sort of particular um economic discussion which would be better placed than the place and, and corporate scrutiny and the economic growth strategy or, or like, again what the say comes up it is i totally agree there isn't going to be one magic bullet so there's got to be different creative ways of addressing some of the challenges that we've got on, you know, we do need to rely very heavily on our partners across one new port, um, you know, who help us and, and we will be relying on them to help us deliver some of the aspects of our corporate plan through the one new port plan also. So I totally agree, none of this is easy given the current context. I think, as we said, the last two and a half, three years were difficult. I think the next two years are going to be even more challenging. I also do agree with, with Matthew's point about that we, we should get some people out on the street and actually talk to the engage with a different demographic. I think I think Chair, that either that's something that team team wants to show together, that something we need to take on board and back in partnerships and on policy team. Okay, note it. Uh, I note the answer and that Councillor Halton's uh, question and sentiments would be better addressed to a different forum. Is there a mechanism for doing this? Not with not him necessarily having to attend, but for his question to be forwarded to the right scrutiny committee. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Alan Wavy, I know you want to come back in again. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just just to comment on the point uh, also made by Councillor Baker Westhead, uh, I think you know the cultural side to Newport is really I feel is 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 not utilised fully. I mean, if I can just put a question, what's happened to the ship? You know, I mean, we've got a unique find there, but we seem to have now it's twenty years I think since that was found and is. Um, is going nowhere as it appears, you know, it's, it's an interesting archaeological project now, but I feel we should make more of it and maybe the plan ought to sort of look at that, you know, I mean, just, just, you know, just a suggestion regarding the cultural dimension to Newport that I feel is, is probably not fully exploited. But what I was coming on, Chair, and, uh, and this was on objective, uh, sorry, where is it? Yeah, uh, objective two under the environment and infrastructure um, where uh, it's just a project and enhanced biodiversity and environment of Newport's urban and rural communities, improving well-being and health. I mean, absolutely there is, you know, there is no doubt that, you know, culture, uh, that biodiversity uh, does improve well-being and health, I feel, you know, it's such an important thing. We had a, an excellent presentation about maybe six months ago, I can't remember precisely when, about, you know, what we can do to actually encourage more biodiversity, uh, if you like, pockets and environments, especially within the urban part of Newport. And there seem to be so many possibilities there, you know, about sort of using um, 
and uh, the space under bridges and you know sort of curbsides and all kind of things and um yeah I, I think you know we haven't heard much about that but i think that's another area where we can really make newport you know sort of um unique uh, or maybe you know to take a, a good step towards that and that is to develop those ideas that that were put in the presentation so i i wonder whether the you know um we can have a comment on that one thank you again um we councillors so obviously we've done quite a lot of work on biodiversity over the last few years we've got um, that's a speed friendly status and particularly during the pandemic and with some extra investment uh, i think a lot of the public found um found comfort in some of our open spaces and we've seen a lot of that retained so yeah i think this will be a core part of our strategy going forward in terms of the detail on how those presentations can be full progress those will form part of the service plan for environment and public protection and we'll be giving you updates on those um, those actions but the team will continue to work in that we hope that will form a good part of the corporate plan going forward uh, but it's always about the space isn't it you know we we have got demand for housing um we, we've got a growing city um and so by you know making it a nice and pleasant public realm and enhanced biodiversity is is an important uh counter that you get all things working together okay, thank you are you content with the answer uh, council on yeah okay thank you for I, I i switched off yeah sorry uh yeah apologies come on yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you for the uh, reply. Yeah. Councillor okay. Bright. And, and yeah, are we having a comment on the ship chair, please? Well, Councillor Long, what I would say is this is about the corporate plan, not specific projects. So I don't think it'd be appropriate no, no, to have I, a conversation I mean, about the yeah. ship specifically today, if that's okay. I'm happy to have a separate conversation, but I don't think it's appropriate for. The discussion uh, and this discussion, Chair, if that's okay. I'll see what it be yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I take your point, but I mean, you know, it it is a it's a unique thing for Newport, isn't it? Okay, Councillor Bright. Uh, yes, thank you. And um, so, referring to bullet point three, objective three, we talk about promoting the positive community and inclusion. I think we we do that really well, and especially previously, pride in the ports. That's an excellent result of that council working partnership. And Bill Carnival, we have um, from on the police um this week in council saying how well that went the first time was any issues there. And you know, we do these big events, we've got the food festival coming up. And I think these big events do, you know, they play an important part in inclusion. So my question would be make sure we obviously money is tight, but we still able to fund and support these big events that bring communities together with a really positive impact. Thank you. No, James. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hall. It's just a bit sort of thing. I just I don't like some of the terminology that you use in the, the things like to become, to create. If their activities are already undertaken and have been undertaken, to me it, it kind of reads um, become an inclusive organisation. We are an inclusive organisation. So I think you just need to find the right term which enhances what's already being done rather than to say we haven't done it because it reads if we haven't done this before we're going to do it i'm not a wordsmith i will allow somebody with a greater education than i to come up with a solution it's not, it's not safe that we start when actually it's, it's a journey and we're part of your journey to, to begin before it gets are we all done? If you can just beg my indulgence, Chair, as a few people have talked about other issues in there, perhaps you could forward um, the comments that my major concern about the lack of students in Newport, um, the way Newport's been treated has been pretty disgraceful. Um, we talk about skills and education. It's a key platform, and I hope whichever um, forum is dealing with this, that um, we do put 
pressure on the university to uh, deliver some of the promises that it made over the years with the city. You really hit the uh, nail on the head when you say put pressure on the university. That's all we can do. It's not a proper function of the university. I don't know because we gave them millions of pounds for the development, both with the council committee that gave them millions of pounds. And I don't know if there was a clause in there, a legal thing, because it shouldn't be a clause. Say, OK, this is on the basis you're going to but originally to keep committing. Um, but we did give them millions of pounds, and the Urban Regeneration Company also gave them millions of pounds. So, um, giving them lots of money on the basis they're going to apply lots of students. I don't know if there's a drawback. Maybe it could be looked into. Yeah. Maybe we can get some more millions back. Thank you, yes. That's a very reasonable point. Okay. That's all the way being used to put your hand up. Yeah. yeah. Chair, just uh, just clarification on the comment by the chief exec. Uh, I got, I brought the issue of the ship because it comes under four of objective one. That's why I brought that. OK, we note. We not. OK, thank yeah. you. Thank you. We all done. OK, thank you very much for your attendance this morning. Yes. 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 You still work for the Korean Museum? Um, I'm on a career break at the moment um, for six months. I, I just didn't know where the names they are names rest. Oh, apologies. I yeah. I mean, Dave, I don't want to you in the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. I, I didn't even consider that. I, I do apologise. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's probably worth noting, Neil, in the, in the, the councillors an interest in it. You're not making a decision on it, you're giving your feedback on it. So when it comes to council, when the council is making a decision on the corporate plan, you may have to declare an interest if you've got to make a comment. OK, does that make sense? Yep, yeah, sorry, sorry. It, it's it, the, the audio is breaking up a little bit. So could you just reiterate that? Sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Councillor. You could hear me much better when I was sitting far further away from the from the microphone. <laughs> not this committee's not making a decision; it's providing feedback. So it's probably just worth noting in the minutes that you have an interest, but you're just providing feedback on the corporate plan. When it goes to council, if you want to make a comment about the corporate plan at council, because it is making a decision, you have to declare an interest at that point. Is that oh, okay? Right. Yeah, I understand. That's given me some clarity. Thank you very much for that. The rough rule of thumb is that if in doubt, declare. As a business owner, do I to declare an interest in the city centre? I'm going to start bringing the. Yeah, it's very different. So if you're talking about the question, that's a very specific thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, I do apologise. I, I didn't think that the um that my thought process either was going to go down that route in in the um in in the meeting that we just had. It's good. It's good money. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. Item five, then, please. Corporate uh, safeguard the annual report. Who's going to present, please? Um, good morning. My name is Kim Dunham. I'm the head of corporate safeguarding. Um, there is, um, I'll just give a brief summary on the um, interim report. So, we have an interim annual corporate safeguard report. Um, it was pre really presented uh, last year in July, I believe. Uh, you can call my time in report. So, um, 
and the reporting cycle for the report has been postponed due to sort of changing scrutiny cycles and obviously the recruitment of um, a new head of corporate safeguarding. Um, respecting the wishes of the committee um, to provide only a streamlined and targeted information, revisions to the format and data presented have been made to the Syndrome report and is anticipated that um, with some further work with partner agencies such as the Gwent Safeguarding Board and um, advice from our government in terms of the draft guidance, so the guidance that they've produced this year, um, a final version of the report model will be presented in the future, probably within the next two years. Um, so to summarise, overall, mm -hmm. the local authorities can find it meeting its duties regarding safeguarding practices for children and adults. Um, it's acknowledged that services are still feeling the effects of post-pandemic and referrals into the hub and um, FCT. First contact team remain very high, uh, with an increase of about 13.9% to the children's home in the last year alone. However, despite these increases, have been, uh, we've been generally effective in implementing the right decision or the right service at the right time for both children and adults via preventative services or early intervention pathways at the front door. Wherever possible, um, through these new models and ways of working, um, we're new called reply to such practices. And regionally, the models of practice of multi agency hubs, prevention step up, step down process, processes, uh, education collaborations are now being adopted and implemented. It's acknowledged that the authority has still got some way to go to improve um, some of the mandatory training compliance targets, particularly when benchmarking to other local authorities. Um, an agency, particularly for the mode of SB compliance, that's the violence against women, domestic abuse, and sexual violence, um, which does carry some Welsh Government non compliance fines. Um, the continued low uh, compliance for mandatory safeguarding training courses by employees, including volunteers and elected members, the matter that we are urgently looking to address to ensure that the completion of the courses is undertaken and failure to do so is um, met by necessary employee conduct when, when, where appropriate. Um, it is, of course, accepted that the face-to-face -face training has been unavailable due to the pandemic um, and for a long time, which has significantly reduced the uptake of some of the courses. Um, however, we're looking to make this less of a barrier and uh, moving forward with an action plan for 22-23. Um, we're asking scrutiny to be aware that the um, relative of volunteer training and face-to-face -face training commencing in September are not accurate in terms of um, than being started yet, but they are due immediately. I realise it's October tomorrow. Um, but we're asking for actions in future work to be indoors. These um, are outstanding rollover of where appropriate prioritisation is given to this work around the mandatory training compliance, the governance and the recording of safeguarding data, for more effective benchmarking and reporting, um, and including developing a more robust self assessment tool which is regionally aligned. Um, looking at the work of what WICIS can do, our recording system to get some um, more kind of live data around some uh, area referrals from the designated safeguarding people um, and looking at aligning some of the Welsh Government's safeguarding training framework, which is rolling out, um, we heard this week, in the new year. Um, so, and also looking at that digital footprint that we talked about previously and the strategies around that to make sure that we've got um, enough information available um, on the internet for um, citizens of Newport to understand what our roles, remit, and commitment is to safeguarding. That's the summary, Chair. If there's anything else that you want to. Thank you. Is anybody else going to contribute? Yeah. No. Okay. I'll be the members there. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So, um, look, thank you for the report. And pretty much mentioned was pick up on that one, right? So regarding the training that we've read to have, but, but just sort of drilling down onto that really. I mean, you mentioned um just wonder how the training is delivered. It talks here about digital training, but then in the action point you've got the um, production of a booklet. So is is the training is it a video they watch and answer questions on, or is the booklet still in? I know obviously face to face training had to happen, but I mean how are we actually Ensuring that's mandatory training and how it's delivered. Um, the mandatory training is delivered via an e-learning module. Right. Um, and, but what we have done is catered for people who aren't necessarily desk-based, computer-based. So we've got school cleaning staff, for example. We do face-to-face -face, um, training for that sort of cohort of employees who would not necessarily be doing their day job looking at a computer. So we've got a two-pronged approach to it, but obviously COVID has really impacted on that being deliverable. Um, 
And I think we're looking at rescheduling that now, obviously, within, that we can go back into doing that kind of work. And we've got um, some staff on the line to, to look at it. But running alongside that is Welsh Government's training framework that's come out, which is going to standardise such a lot of safeguard and training across the social care se sector, for, including health and police colleagues. So everybody will be required to do a sort of tiered approach to training. And that will really give us a boost to kind of get in there and do um, a, a tiered approach in, our, in the work that we need to do in terms of everybody's responsibility absolutely safeguarding is but i think some people the example i often use is the person that delivers pens to civic would need less training than somebody who's in a school so it's about nuanced approaches to understanding what it is the basic requirements are how we deliver them how we record that delivery and then how we benchmark to show improvement thank you thank you and yeah, so Mary Ryan from um, Adults, um, and also in terms of the Welsh Government Violence Goods Women, Domestic Abuse, Sexual Violence, the National Training Framework that they um, instruct us to deliver on, <clears throat> I think what we have to know for the, the last couple of years is when the pandemic happened, it sort of it wasn't about training stopping or saying, God, we know it's important, we were still out there delivering services and you know, receiving referrals. Um, but we actually went to a sort of online portal of what we can do. And as Finn has just said, depending of your position, your role, but, you know, it's about sort of making sure we've got it streamlined in terms of what it is that we expect for you to complete. But on that, what we did do is um, <clears throat> we did uh, some of the Welsh Government um, require training for our sort of senior leaders and chief execs and councillors was actually a whole day and um, we performed very badly at that in terms of a council because it was very hard we weren't on our own that was across Wales because it was very hard for everybody to give up a whole day to go to conference centre to do that so what we did is we did we delivered a whole load of about four different sort of two two hour sessions virtually and we had a really excellent attendance from our Councillors and our senior executive in um, in Cardiff, so we're doing uh, uh, in uh, in Newport. So we're actually doing better at some of the some of the areas of training than other authorities. But yeah, it's a it's a priority going forward. That always make sure that it's uh, top of the agenda. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I welcome the report. I welcome the fact that um, you have listened to this loud the main amendments. Um, Again, you know, we had things on staffing structures and people. It's not our job to tell you how you structure your organisation. Although, Neil, you might like to um, know that we've still got that in our green next um, on our recommendations. Um, we talked about training. I think that what they had to do double take on was the number of referrals. Let's go by almost 40% over the last three years. Is that 11,000 referrals in youth? Natalie Poyner has a children's services. Yeah. Um, yes, indeed it is. Um, so um, we've seen a significant increase in, in referrals per year. Um, so we're, we're averaging a, um, a significant amount um, compared to, to previous years. Um, and indeed, the complexity of the referrals is 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 a lot um, is a lot higher than, than the previous. I mean, that's a staggering percentage um, with the population so small in people. I mean, it's it's quite. Um, so, I think there are statistics in there, but roughly of, of all those referrals, what's the percentage? Did you take action? Which ones? So, um, at the moment. Um, the, the, the data over the last few months, we've seen a number that we've been referring on to preventative services. So in terms of a percentage, I suppose it's probably over the last few months, I think it's about 50 percent that we're referring then on to early intervention services. Um, but prior to that, it was actually significantly higher amount that we were actually taking through um, in terms of accepting through statutory services. Um, can I comment from an adult's perspective? Um, yeah. um, and it's, it's the same. And I think sort of post-pandemic, what we are seeing is um, whereas 
by the pandemic, the referrals coming through is about sort of 80 20 for mental services. In terms of 80%, we could signpost or we could do early intervention and prevention, but actually 20% was more complex people with it, you know, additional care and support needs are going to need more assessment and more support going forward. Um, we're seeing that change now. And uh, what's happening, we believe, is that actually people have not come forward through the pandemic for, for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. And now we're picking people up with their they're much more poorly. Their care and support needs are much higher. Their care and needs are, are higher in terms of what they need to sustain themselves in the, in the community. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a different, it's, it's a changing picture, but actually it's, it's a more pressured picture in terms of what we can do um, as statutory social services. Thank you. And just a of interest, has this um, Welsh Government scheme come in for looked after children when they leave care? Funding wise? Yes. So it happened it started, right? Yes, it's it started in, in July um, and it's it's worked quite well at the moment. Um, so we received support from um Citizen Advice Bureau. They're sitting within our offices as well to support um our young persons advisors in ensuring that that, that the money is is you know is, is spent as it as it should be. I've seen that's being monitored. So the, the, the point about the uh, the figures and things in the reports, if they wanted percentages on the youth would help. Um, because if it's 11,000 in London, then it would be uh, 11,000 in, in Newport as a percentage of the population, bear in mind. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is anybody else going to pick up on training? If they are, I'll uh, hold off until I see if the questions are being asked. I'm sure you. Okay. Uh, some years ago, and Reese will probably have forgotten it by now, I asked about subjective or objective training. And I think the answer I got back was we trust our staff, so we don't tend to do objective training. In a professional sort of services environment, is that necessarily satisfactory? Because I'm thinking of your CPD requirements and on the professional social service workers, uh, how many hours on days a year are they supposed to be up? And how do you measure this? Because I know the engineering council tries to scrutinize what I do, some difficulty. But I also um, would like to pick up on some of the data that you've uh, presented to us. Because uh, on page nine of your report, page 33 of that report, and there are other, other examples, but we'll just highlight on, on this one. Um, e learning information security training by teams, by staff members. And you tell, tell us how many uh, staff members have done this training, but you don't give us a percentage. So, you know, 167 staff members might be a very high number. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure that 18 is a pretty low number, but, you know, we do need to have this information put in front of us in some way that we can discern how well you're doing in training your staff. Could that be uh, the case for future reports, please? If you could comment on the generality of CPD. In terms of, so in terms of all our qualified social work staff, we have, um, they're all registered individuals and every three years they have to re-register and as part of that re-registration is actually they have to um, produce their training plans, what they've done, that is signed up by their manager, so there is a sort of assurance in that. In terms of our unqualified but our social care staff, the firm at residential perspective in our residential homes, there is similar requirements for them now to be registered and also take up that training. So they're, they're starting to come in, but from a statutory perspective, that's been the case for um, as long as I've been a social worker, um, but it, that's also rolling out now into other areas that maybe weren't so prescribed before. We've talked about return on uh, social worker staff, which has traditionally been quite high in the board. So when we employ them, are their CPD or their registration always up to date? Yeah. And when does the clock start ticking for this three years and from the time we employ them or from their previous employer? Often it's a mixture. If you've come across and you were registered a year ago, we check that they are registered, we check their DBS, that's all sort of 
onboarding process we call them in terms of making sure everything is is correct and then that you know they don't go out and they don't start working with anybody until all that is confirmed. Anyone else? I would just like to say thank you because obviously we do essentially horrible jobs. So as in you feel in horrible situations like you do bad jobs. Um, and it's just something that I could never never do and just looking at the statistics and the numbers i struggle to understand how people can be that way so so thank you anyone else okay thank you very much for your attendance thank you thank you Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then if we can go back to our um, convenience. Um, at three o'clock, we were asked to consider the track well being the objectives of the strategic priorities of the council and to to provide comment and recommendations on the draft corporate plan so dealing with the third part first are we content with the um, priorities that they've set any comment no we see are we content i know your comments will be reflected in the some of the comments that I've taken is um, your comments come to evidence or came to the whole thing um, in regards to um, having people in the volunteer boards in the city centre and yeah. uh, trying to get their opinion with more like, diverse groups. Um, I've also take, um, copied in the case of Big West Heads um, comments about regarding the heritage of it uh, to try and support the economy. Um, got the chief exec's comment about take, taking on board about the jobs and how the local people can access jobs. Um, Councillor Horton's um, comment about the, the, some of the verbiage in the um, report as well, just to uh, try and get the correct terms to enhance what's been done. But was there any other comments or recommendations the committee would like me to take forward? Um, there's a question, if you might. Yeah. Um, when the chief exec mentioned, uh, mentioned that uh, the regeneration report was not really a part of this report we've received this morning, are we to expect that at uh, overview and scrutiny or to go to another forum? I think with the um, economic growth strategy that normally comes to place on corporate committee, I'll, um, I'm sure it can the previous year. I'll make sure that it that is the case. So I'll um, make um, committee members aware of that as well, which committee comes to. Um, I'm sure if there were references about um, the comments about heritage should um, the university um, just mentioned would be helpful if they were brought into the relevant. And you had a specific question, Matthew, about whether the, there was an impossible clawback. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a, it's a long shot, but um, if you if you do something, you give somebody a lot of money to, to do something, and they don't um, build their objectives. So. I just see which service area deals with that to forward that. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well. You work for the university. No, the college. Oh, the college man. Blair, make that new content. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I was hoping the uh, issue of the ship will be included as part of the, you know, sort of the cultural heritage or that sort of thing is, you know, to increase the uh, ability for Newport to be a destination 
city, you know, for tourism, that sort of thing. So, you know. Your manifesto, Mita. It's in your manifesto, if you're okay. Yeah. Okay. Matthew had already asked if you included it. Okay. So, moving we'll on to the second uh, report we had this morning, you can ask you to consider that. The annual report and the executive uh, summary. Some of the um, comments that I take up from this, um, Councillor Evans, um, comment that um, you welcome that the um, the team had listened since last year and made the appropriate amendments. And um, you also mentioned about um, the fig the percentages of the figures would be helpful. For yeah, the I think it would because eleven thousand out of two and a half million is different from eleven thousand out of hundred fifty six out of whatever it is. It's any percentage. Well, it's eleven thousand out of P. The betting maximum of 40 well, so yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so we, we're looking in. It's always helpful to have percentages and everything. And what might be good is to see whether or not that is, the, if it if is possible, how much of that is the same person, same child. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because it might be um, the same child being bought on every week. Yeah. 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 As if it's single incident children, the figure is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Well, it's the way anyway. Yeah. I'm sorry, just for, um, I think it says in our, what we're supposed to consider, it's already got the recommendation we should look at the structures. Yes. On there, which they've removed, but we haven't removed it, so we need to remove it as well. That makes sense. Um, I've got what page is on there, but. Um, you're right at the beginning, I thought. Was that in the cover report? Huh? Yeah, that would be in the cover report. So, uh, so that's page 21 of my agenda. So the, role, yeah, the role of the committee is considering, in considering report is that it mentions consider whether the structure of the people say got a human structure is appropriate. Um, that's something which we are not qualified. Do we really need to be you know, not a job to come up on structures? No, I'm trying to get appropriate, and they've removed it in their report that used to be not. No, but I'm in sure in future cover reports that part is not as an area of progress. Yeah, because it's good scan. That's the channel was to no, 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 no. organizational structure of an operation area. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Well, no, Finn. Report is she told us that uh, they were compliant in most major areas, with the exception of the voluntary uh, registered, I think. Was there any other further comments or recommendations that you'd like to make um, for the heads of service for this report, or are you happy with what's been said? Oh, yeah. so we. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. What, what about the training issue, Paul? You can. Uh, well, it, that, uh, yes. So we we only see a annually, don't we? Yeah. 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 So I think it'd be helpful due to the. Uh, the seriousness of the lack of training. We have a, a mid report solely on that figure on how they're achieving that target of training, maybe. That's, would that be acceptable? Yeah, well, we can ask for an update. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, so an update, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that report to contain meaningful figures, mm -hmm. not just numbers that, uh, you know, they're not telling us how many staff they're employing. We can't even work out percentages. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's worth so you I just your point about taking the job they do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there is yeah. As in they do have a big job, they have everything. Yeah, so I make sure that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it might be worth if possible. When we're going to bring the numbers down, give it some meaning for data so we can understand what the FTE is, rather than they might say they got five hundred staff. Yeah. But there might only be a hundred FTE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, they, you know, they've got to be the meaning of this. 
And then if you do have a lot of part time staff and you say, well, we won't go do a day's training, it becomes, yeah, oh, like you should put us in the fish, then isn't it? So, okay, thank you, guys. So, I'm just going to say that's got so much paperwork. Last year, I'm going to say, why is your FTV? How many people do you have? Oh, but that, those, you know, those ones are relatively easily found. You know, we're not asking for something obscure. Even if at the last meeting we found that there was a uh, discrepancy between the number employed on one page and the number employed on another page. Okay, so we, we're content um, with the safeguarding. We've got the your comments here. Right, over to you then, please. Uh, Yep. So, um, for the scrutiny advisor report, just take a look at Sam's um, agenda on page 67 is the action sheets from the um, last meeting on the 23rd of September. Um, the conclusions that will have been completed, so um, they've been sent to the officers, so I'll um, collect them together and send them to the committee. Um, send the previous information as well. On the 23rd, see, um, she hasn't updated the, the table yet, but I know that um, we have sent the recommendations off, so uh, we'll make sure this table is completed. The next committee meeting is on the 21st of October. That will be the annual um, compliments, comments, and complaints report, and also the um, annual corporate wellbeing self assessment report. Last of new requirement for the now GPA. And then we've also got um, the 2nd of December planning and performance risk management framework. Oh, that'd be nice to get to the, <laughs> the, the, the meetings were slowly sad, been up by quite because I know it's been pretty manic for this committee over the last couple of weeks. But everything on outside checking. Um, well, the committee, are we content that we're meeting now again? The picture we've got up on the screen in front, so I appreciate Claire and Victor can't see it, but that's all the public can see of us. Yeah, we can do additional testing um, in committee room one, where we would normally have a committee uh, meeting anyway on a live event. Hope, hope, we're hoping that on a live event, the camera view will be slightly closer. But um, again, we can um, we lay out findings back to the committee, but ultimately it's what you would prefer. If you would prefer to have it in the council chambers, I know it's obviously the larger space, but uh, you know, it's, it's whatever your preferences, we can accommodate for you. Thoughts? Well, the, the public, the image the public sees is obviously much bigger than that, that little one we've got a bit here. Yeah. Um, how much more effort is it to be in, in chambers, for example? Is it a week? Uh, yeah, with, with the chambers, um, we would need, um, because it would be one of the scrutiny advisors next to the chair, so there'd be one for the governance team. You have someone to operate the camera, as we would in, in full council meeting, and we would also have someone to operate the hands up facility as well to take everything off. So it would be I think an additional governance team officer to do it. Um, whereas if we do live in, in, in the chain in, in um, the committee room, it's just one less officer. So, but of course, whatever the committee would prefer, we can do the additional testing to ensure you know it would look better for the public and for um, committee members joining remotely. Could I propose then that we? Have a we each go have a look and see at the recording mm -hmm. and see whether we feel that it's suitable and make a decision from that. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, Oh yeah, and um, Taylor's got a live feel or something. So that we're still live. We're still live. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just don't want us wasting resources. Uh, yes, sadly. I did look at the last. Most of my names in lights, headlights, so that's the important thing. <laughs> what do you say? That's all you say. You can do an eye for you know, regardless of you know the uh, the number of governance team, you know, it requires, but it's entirely what committee would look at. Again, but we also don't know if somebody's using they may well have, have pinned the main screen so they can see the main screen. Yeah. 